you making for us, Kelsey? All right, today we're gonna be making homemade eggnog. I'm so brave. Okay. Yeah, first time doing it, so I know I do it. Yeah, we're we're all gonna learn together. <laughs> so, but apparently it's not very hard. No, it says it's only gonna take 15 minutes. Wow. For to mix everything in. Cool. Let's do it. I'm excited okay. for some yeah. eggnog. Yeah. So we're following Alton Brown's recipe mm -hmm. from his show Good Eats. I like him. Yeah. So traditionally eggnog is not cooked. So that's the route that we're going to go today. But you can cook it as well. Just FYI. And that'll be on the recipe card. Okay. So we're going to start by separating two egg yolks. That was beautiful. How many eggs do you need for this? Just two. Really? Um, well, the original recipe is going to be um, four. But we're having the recipe. Ah. Uh, since there's not as many of us. This is good for, the original recipe is good for like a party yeah. um, punch. It's supposed to make like between six and seven cups. So. Okay, so please don't judge. I'm gonna try to do this by hand, but I've tried whisking by hand before and it's not pretty. Also, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so it's me, well, okay, let's just wait. So we're, we're just, just learning. This. So we're just dumping this in. Yep, and we're gonna whisk it together until the sugar is dissolved. Okay, so like, what's your whisking action? It's what? all on the forearm. <laughs> this is obviously <laughs> helpful. This See? is technique this, right here. This is what I end up doing. I tried to make some chocolate chip cookies, and I made them by hand. Like, I didn't use a stand fix or anything, and um, it was just like sweating. <laughs> so that's I, fine. Yes, that looks professional. <laughs> We're just whisking away. Yay! Whisk, whisk, whisk. And you can already see Ooh, that the beautiful. sugar is dissolving. Yeah. It's a little weird because we're only using two, so it's... And also a tip, you'll, you can hear the sugar grazing against the bowl. Oh. So once it lessens, you know that it's dissolving. What do you think? Oh, please, God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is why Kelsey's the bartender. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm proud of you. I'm just sitting here heckling. I can't. <laughs> if I tried to separate the eggs, there would be shells everywhere. So, yeah, that's yeah, that's good. Yeah, and you know, yolks, store-bought yolks usually have more of an orangish color, and you can already tell that they're lighter because of the orange is pretty much gone. Great. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's good. Nice. That's good. Um, <clears throat> so the next step is going to be adding our milk, cream, and our bourbon. Ooh. So we've already measured out. This is our milk here. Yep. Um, so the original recipe calls for a pint, but we're just using one cup because we're having the recipe. Um, so I'm just going to pour that in there. And did you use whole milk? This is yes. whole milk. Yep. And then it's going to be half a cup. It's going to be one and a half ounces of bourbon for the half recipe, three ounces for the original. I wonder if we should add more. <laughs> yes, we prefer things a little stronger. Mm -hmm. That is about a little bit closer to two ounces. Or I've seen recipes use like dark rum mm -hmm. or brandy as well, which you have here. Yes. Oh, and the last thing is nutmeg. Oh, yeah. That's good. Gotta save some for the topping. Oh, uh, that's true. Done. Make it pretty. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we're gonna give it another whisk. Will the whiskey make it frothy, or is that the job of the egg whites? Um, there will be some froth given the chemistry of eggs mm -hmm. and cream, but um, the egg whites will definitely add to that. Can you whisk it too much? Um, yes, because it starts to harden, right? Yeah. Well, you can definitely whisk the egg whites too much. Yes. <laughs> because then you suddenly have meringue. Yeah. Thanks. And you can do this obviously with a hand mixer or a stand mixer too. Now we get to add in the whites and beat it until it has a, more of a soft peak. This bowl has the two egg whites that we separated. And we're just going to start beating. See that it's frothing? Oh, yeah. Like yeah. this. Um, it takes about two to three minutes for egg whites on their own to turn into soft peaks. Mm. Um, so this is going to go over a little bit. 
That's really cool. And it's actually already forming soft. So, because if you do this. Yeah. Oh, it's staying. Yeah. It's peak. It's peak. Now we can start adding in that little tablespoon and um, then they'll form stiff peaks. Cool. And then you can touch it over your head. Yes. Yep. And then, uh. peaks. And then, should I have done it right? Ooh! Oh <laughs> Maybe I'll dump it. Okay. Oh, I should have gotten that pull off. So we're okay. So yeah, we're gonna just come on. Ooh, that's interesting. Is it fluffy? It's very fluffy. It looks fluffy. Yeah. You don't cook it. It is now ready to drink. Like it's ready to sit. Yeah. So, so we, we just, just chill it and okay. drink. I'll get the glasses. So the drink looks delicious. I'm a little skeptical. I'm excited. I'm not gonna lie. Are you fans of eggnog? I'm still really afraid of this. I like specific mines, but it depends. Have you ever had homemade eggnog? I have not had homemade. The first one to be an experience. Okay. All right, the drink's ready. Okay. Pass through. Okay. So fancy in these beautiful glasses. You got okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your Lit Up Women kit includes Alton Brown's eggnog recipe that we just made, two accessories, a festive bookmark featuring a quote from the book, as well as a Pickwick Club membership pin, and finally, all the supplies you'll need to make a simple but elegant Little Women book page ornament. Have fun! So, how many times have you read this book, Susan? Quite a question. Um, oh god, I have no idea. I, I can't even remember when I first read the book. I was pretty young. I read it maybe three times, I would say. Yeah. Three or four for me. Yeah. That's really? Crazy. High school classes, college classes. I've only read it once. Oh. I never read it in my English classes. I just read it for fun. Do you feel differently as an adult thinking about sort of the plot and the characters? Than maybe you did when you were younger. I tried to read it, you know, for this meeting, and it was a little bit too, I don't want to say perfect, mm. but it Pastoral. felt a little, yeah. It, when I read it in high school, which was the first time, I got to pick my own reading books. Little Women was one of them, and I remember it It just seemed like a fairy tale love story. Like, it, it seemed perfect. Mm -hmm. But now, reading it as an adult, I see so much more of selfish sides of the sisters than mm -hmm. I had when I read it in high school because I wasn't looking at those parts in high school. I was looking at more of the perfection mm -hmm. because that was what my teenage brain wanted to aspire to and wanted to read about. Whereas my adult brain was like, these are actually issues in the world. Mm -hmm. But I think as an adult, I mean, as a kid, it was very heartwarming and, you know, kind of this air of like the simple, not simple life, but if you know, kind of know what I mean. But as an adult, I want to like read and learn more about real issues and mm -hmm. talk about character flaws. So it was a little hard to get into this time around, but I wonder if that's even partly due to the pandemic, to be honest. I think it's colored a lot of things. <laughs> Who's your favorite sister? I feel like everybody's favorite sister is probably Joe. Well, the majority. I don't know. Who do you identify with? I changed your question, I'm sorry. I think favorite would be Joe, but I identify with Beth. Um, yeah, I mean definitely Joe. I think in terms of her ideology, uh, I guess. You also identify with her? Yeah. You're totally a Joe. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm quiet, but I'm not really like that. <clears throat> oh yeah, I'm not. Sure. Like domestic and well, that was totally a parallel that Joe and Beth had. I think that's why they connected, mm -hmm. is because they're both kind of introverted, somewhat very like more quiet, mm -hmm. um, and they also had this like nurturing relationship. Like Joe took a lot, like more care of Beth than the other sisters. I have always resonated more with Meg. I know because I think I'm a people pleaser. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. But I want to be more like Joe. 
Although there are qualities of all the sisters, I think I would like to be more like. Like Amy is very tenacious and a go-getter, and <clears throat> Joe like is outspoken, um, and Beth is so kind. So I think there's parts of all the sisters that I like. I feel like Amy gets a lot of crap. She does, and I, the um, most recent adaptation of Little Women totally changed my oh, opinion yeah, of her the, for sure. Yes, so much more really of cool. an Amy fan now. Yeah, like seeing that through her eyes was like, oh, yeah. yeah, that was awesome. awesome. I'll admit, when I read the book for the first time, I was the whole manuscript burning oh. situation. <laughs> You'll never be free. <clears throat> I was totally an Amy hater at the beginning. But I also feel like I saw a lot of myself in her because I was also the youngest child. Mm. Being hard on myself, taking it out on the victim character type. Mm -hmm. But I also, you said that Joe is a lot of people's favorite. I think that's because a lot of people aspire to be like her, mm -hmm. even though there are yeah. good character traits in all of them. Mm -hmm. I think that that whole like burning manuscript, almost letting her drown. <laughs> they create that they are good foils. You know what I mean? Like they really are a, a good match, which is a why I think that it makes sense that Lori ends up with Amy in the end. Because she's a, a perfect foil for Joe. Mm -hmm. She has a lot of the same qualities as Joe. Mm -hmm. Um but she loved Lori. But okay. Sorry, <laughs> Joe's ending. Oh yeah, I know. So disappointing. I know, I know. I've, I've never gotten over that. But I mean, apparently that was the, this is probably a well-known fact that the author, like she knew that her fans wanted Lori mm -hmm. and Joe to end up together, and so she deliberately changed that. Yeah. So Joe ends up with this really lame, boring, <laughs> I know, who I, makes fun of her work. I know! That's like, the part that bothered me the most. What the heck? Sometimes we need sensational stories, like when we're going through a global pandemic. We do. Well, those stories can be quality literature too. I agree. Poor Joe. Seriously, she gave up her writing. Mm -hmm. I really haven't gotten over this. It's been here. I know. That's why I don't want to read it. I don't want to read it again. I refuse to read it. not do that, so. Here's a question. Who do you think had the most character growth of the sisters? Mm -hmm. I mean, in a lot of ways, you can say that they all grew. I think that it's so profound that Louisa May Alcott <laughs> wrote a character like Beth, who was tragic. And her growth was knowing that her purpose in life was to live for her family and, her, and others. And to be so young and to realize that, I think, was moving. You know, because of all the things that she did for other people. And even when she knew she was going to die. I mean, she still she served did. others. Mm -hmm. Which I think is really even more tragic, but also very mm -hmm. profound. I think Amy did as well. Mm -hmm. I feel like Joe almost, like, I'm still really upset. Yeah. Like, regressed, kind of. I feel like Meg doesn't have a lot of growth either, to be honest. Yeah. I liked Meg's character. I think that what she represented was the, like, ideal of the time period. She was, like, the control against what all the other sisters can aspire to either be or overthrow. <laughs> She was. I mean, she's basically a woman when the novel begins, mm -hmm. right? They all kind of ended up with pretty lame, like, husband. Well, except for Beth, obviously. Well, she, yeah, did not have a bad ending. <laughs> Sorry. Would you have a shitty husband? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's kind of how I feel. <laughs> God. Like, now I feel like maybe I'm complaining, like, the the different books, like Joe's Boys and the movie, and maybe, but no, I feel like they were pretty lame. Yeah. I think that the adaptation, the most recent adaptation, made him look more, made Professor Bear look more attractive oh, than he actually yeah. was. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, both in his physical looks as well as his personality. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if we're going by the book, not so much. Yeah. John Brooke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of... Yeah. I mean, even Lori <laughs> like, doesn't have that much... He does evolve somewhat, but... Mm -hmm. And even Mr. March! Oh, I forget about him. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just talk about all the men! It's little women, but we are here for the men! <laughs> we're coming for them! Speak for yourself! <laughs> no, we're gonna put them down! <laughs> we're okay, over that, the men! That's okay. Yeah, he's not even around for the first time. Yeah. 
though it's totally the first quarter of the book is totally centered on him. A lot. His absence. His absence. Yeah. yeah. I think in, yeah, now I'm just going back to this book was it? It was it was another spin-off kind of thing, but like the parents actually get divorced because he's kind of a Really? He's never around. I can't remember which one it was. Hmm. I didn't know that. That's actually really interesting. So, I mean, I, based on what I read about the author, because he was kind of based on, mm -hmm. yeah, the father as well, her father. Yeah. So, yeah, he, he was interesting. The real life, her father. Okay. Yeah, or maybe not that interesting. How you look at it? Sorry. <laughs> well, it's interesting is more and more like it's sort of exposing like mm -hmm. what was wrong, maybe. Yeah with the original, which I find interesting. Mm -hmm. I still really yeah. enjoy the story. Oh, absolutely. It's cozy. It's cozy. It's Christmassy. It's heartwarming. It's heartwarming. It teaches valuable lessons in that we should care about other people. Mm -hmm. It's, I don't. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>